Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about dealing with untechnical people. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, hi Frederick, what advice would you give to someone working with a line, like a manager, totally unqualified in the technical area? Well, I would give you basically the same advice that I give everybody because that's sort of the norm, honestly. It really is. The norm is that most of the tech the managers in IT don't actually know anything about uh, technical matters. But that's sort of the, like, uh, that's my beef. Like, the if I had one, if I could make a one tiny, tiny, tiny adjustment to most of the leadership structures of the world, I would say that, you know, that thing that we sort of base most uh, hiring processes around, merit and so forth, for, which is, of course, true for all muggles like, our, like me and you and all the mortals around us. It would be great if we had the same sort of testing process and reviewing process of people in higher leadership positions. It's just that the higher up that you get, the less it becomes about what you can prove that you contribute with and what you can show that you know and it has more to do with other factors which is no exception here so what I usually do here is that I try to think about a saying that I came up with my I sort of came up with myself I, I'm get, I'm not saying that I no one has ever said this before but basically uh, the saying that I have is that why would you use somebody else uh, somebody else's shortcomings as an excuse to be less than you can be and so this is one of those I think a better version might be that you know rise to the occasion something like that uh, and this is something that I give I sad to, I think that I well, it's not that many people who do this. I usually am really. I like to think that I'm pretty good at picking my teammates when it comes to these sorts of matters. Because when I work with sort of like with a team, I basically try to uh, make sure that the people who are within that team are the sort of people who can take on an expanded responsibility that falls outside of what they strictly could argue for is their only task. So. That basically, what, what I'm trying to say here is basically that you can bridge the fact that you have an un, uh, like a inept or incompetent, in, underqualified, call it whatever, a manager, by being competent yourself and understanding what factors make up a successful software team. So an example that I usually see is that you have software developers who get really, really well seated in the technical area like they they like doing the technical stuff they like just doing coding and things like that and then they sort of get frustrated when the management part doesn't work or the planning doesn't work or things like that and I usually tell them as I said but why is it that like you're a software developer you're smart enough to do this why are you not seeing this as just another problem to be solved that's usually how I look at it and that's why I today have, like, this is what gets me to, like, the next level of things. Where I basically, I mean, there's no question that the coding is a po is an important part of the delivery process. But if you underestimate, if, if, as I've said, it, you, if you start, s stop thinking about the only thing that is worth solving is the coding and you start thinking in terms of what is the, th the all the things that have to happen for us to efficiently ship that software. Then you start thinking about code as a means to an end, just as a meeting is a means to an end. A planning session or a story card is just a means to an end. It's something that it's a process or a tool or something that you do in order to meet some results. And so when I started thinking in that way, at the very least, I started to pick, figure out that, all right, so now I have reached a point where the limiting factor in for that end result 
is no longer found in my code because I reached a point of technical understanding where I can basically code any solution that I've ever been asked to build. Like, I, there's no, like, that's not how it is in the start. Like, as a fr when you're a junior software developer, the limiting factor is your comprehension, your talent, and your skill, and so forth. So you need a little while bef before you get to that level of experience where you can basically build anything. But now you'll see that the next set of problems, as you were saying, might be found with your manager. But now, uh, before you may not have like I'm not saying that you ma your manager you know even juniors have bad managers and so forth, but you weren't in in a state of readiness to deal with a more expanded set of problems or take on a greater role. And when you get to that point, when you master the technical parts, a lot of software developers, especially the more experienced ones, they sort of just stay there. And I go, yeah. This problem will never you will never deal with this problem. You're you're doomed to frustration because the having an underqualified manager work is the same thing as having an underqualified coworker. You can complain, and maybe someone will hear you out. But we're talking about the vast majority of the industry, guys. The vast majority of industry. So, like, are you going to go to the next job? What are the odds that you're going to find a qualified manager? In like, are you going to interview the manager? That's, you know that that's not how it works in the interviews. Like they interview you, they you don't really get to say and so forth and so forth because they usually have a manager already. And so this crapshoot, which it is, to find that perfect set of coworkers, is a very naive way of of dealing with this. I mean, you can go the other route, which a lot of people do: quiet quitting, stoic values, and just take care of it, you know, internally, and just sort of yeah. You know, Fuck all of this. These people are incompetent. They don't know what they're doing. And I'm just going to do my thing. And then this project is going to fall to shit. And then you sort of become this reserved senior or experienced person who doesn't really... Like you, you, you limit yourself, basically, because you're not willing to, re uh, to figure out that you can... Br if you have the capacity, you should ideally try to bridge that. And so that's the thing that I try to do. I try to understand that, well, if I have an incompetent manager, that doesn't necessarily co pose a problem for me because I can fix that just as I can fix the code. So if the meetings are, for example, if we don't have retro, so like all of these sorts of things, you know, if you have a manager who basically shuts everything down for you, that's the problem. But if they're going to allow you, you should just come with a suggestion, say, and motivate. That's what I try to do, to take more of a mentoring role. In when I did. It's the same thing I do with juniors. If With a junior software developer, I try to mentor them into writing software in an efficient way because I have some experience in that area. I've done the same thing with manager where I'll tell them, like, most of the software developers need some basic structure so probably we should have a Kanban board probably should do this and it's sort of it's like training train you just basically coaching people to do better and most managers if if they see the value if you can explain it to them in a way that they sort of understand they're usually very open to it I've never really seen that fail and in many cases guys this turns out really well for you it's done for me it's gone for it's not like these things don't go get recognized in the right company of course where guys I, you know, getting promoted like that happens very quickly if you can do these sorts of things where you can actually contribute not just to writing a good story, because that's the sort of stuff that every software developer can do, but to actually bring the results. Because as I said, software, the writing of software, being really good at that, that's great, but the software, well, that's just one part of the whole thing that has to take place in order for the results to be there. And it is the results and your overall contribution to those results that means that uh, that makes you a good employee or a good coworker or a good manager or so forth and so forth. And you know, the more you ex expand your understanding of what steps have to take place and the more you can actually take on at the same, like, you know, within these different areas, the well, it's going to be better for you. I promise you. You're basically preparing yourself to take over the whole team and then the whole department and then the whole company. That's, it's actually that simple. So what I want you to take away from this is that if you're dealing with an underqualified manager or so forth, just do what most people do either. Like if the, what is, the norm is usually that you try to switch jobs until you find a manager that you can stand or and most of the, you will fail and instead you will come sort of like just sit and do your part and either become bitter or apathetic or you know sort of find ways of entertaining yourself because the person that you're dealing with is incompa inco in incapable 
of fixing the problems that you have an issue with, like where they don't really do a good job. Uh, and as friends of mine have said, like it's not like I want to be stupid. It's just that I am. So what am I supposed to do? And I agree. You can't really uh, holding an incompetent person f uh, responsible for the fact that they're incompetent is very difficult because it's well you can argue for if it's their fault or so forth but if you have the capacity to see the things that should be happening and you're not taking action or not like suggesting things or trying to help out then you're limiting yourself so my suggestion is to start doing that instead if you have gotten to the point where your software coding skills is at a level where you can yeah I can solve most problems then start thinking about okay so how do we make sure that all the stories have a good description how do we make sure that there are acceptance criteria? How do we release safely so we don't have all these regressions? Take a greater responsibility and realize that the coding is just one part, a very important part, but it's just one part of all the things that has to take place in order for the results to be there, because it is the results that matter, not each individual piece by themselves. All of these things fit together to create those results. Have a great day.